What up everybody and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be doing an EDC review of a new knife that I picked up in the uh, Civivi lineup, a budget friendly knife. Actually one of the most budget friendliest knives I've ever seen released from Civivi. It's going to be the uh, Civivi Praxis Mini. It's going to be a new addition to the collection that I got and I wanted to go over it and do a full review on this knife. So let's get into that review. Alrighty guys, uh, before we go any further into the video, I just want to, as always, thank any of my subscribers and anybody who just stopped in to check out this video. If you find any of this kind of informative or information at all informative, or if you find it at all just interesting, uh, please go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button and turn on bell notifications to get posted when I do new content and release it onto the platform. Other than that, guys, let's get into the top down view of this knife and check out the Praxis Mini by Civivi. Alrighty guys, now that here we're here over at the top down setup, we can check out this Praxis Mini in further detail and give it a closer look. So uh, the Praxis Mini is definitely a knife that I'm going to say uh, is, is probably one of the best budget bangs for your buck that I've ever come across, um, ever. <laughs> now, uh, if, if you are watching this video, I'm assuming from a base assumption that you know who Civivi are, and if you don't, um, basically, there's a company, it's a Chinese company called We Knives. They do some really premium work on their um, higher end models and they sell some knives that are made with premium materials and their uh, premium pricing. Well, they also have a budget line called Civivi. Uh, they're known for using a lot of 9CR18 MOV, uh, which is really good steel. Uh, sometimes some of their models you can find in like higher end steels like S35 VN, uh, but they generally stay with D2 or 9CR, uh, Nitro V, things like that, some budget based steels, but their quality craftsmanship is completely, it, it, it's rock solid. It's got some really good things about it and they've, they've manufactured quite a few knives that I enjoy a lot. And as a matter of fact, over the years, um, I, I think I have almost like 25 of their knives in my collection from their push buttons to their frame locks, uh, flippers, all sorts of different variations of their products. And this one right here holds true to the uh, fit and finish of every Civivi that I've ever held in my hand. But the banger about this is that this came in at only $29. So for $29 in the EDC knife market, there's not very much out there available that isn't complete crap. Now you do you do have your exceptions like Mora's. Um, they're a popular bushcraft knife that you can pick up for like $15. Openel is another one of those older fashioned knives that is, you know, it's a decent knife for the, the $12 you pay. But, but as far as a general consensus goes, if you're spending more or less than, I'd say, $25, $30 on a knife, you really can't expect much from that knife. Um, then you get into your other $30, $40 knives like the Rat, Ontario Rat 1, which is a really good knife. But that's like basically the baseline for a decent knife. And for them to hit the price point of $29 on this is very impressive to me. Um, it's coming in with steel liners that are skeletonized. Uh, I don't know if you can see inside here. I'm going to try to get you a little inside view of the scales there. A little bit you can see the skeletonization of the steel liner locks right there or liner frame. Uh, and then it has these G10 scales which is 
just it's it's done it just as well as all of their other G10 with the chamfering to make it feel a little bit more rounded off and comfortable in the hand. Um, it's on ball bearings and it's with D2 steel. And this is also actually some of the thinnest blade stock I've ever seen on a Civivi knife, uh, which lends to a very slicey geometry. Uh, this knife has actually made me consider getting the Praxis full size just because I have enjoyed carrying it so much. And uh, unfortunately, the Praxis is is not one of the knives that I've kept in my collection or even handled ever. Uh, but this knife definitely makes me want to go out and test it out and see if I like it. So getting into the specs on this knife, we're going to come in with a closed length of just under 4 inches, 3.7 inches there, closed length. Then we're going to have an open length of a total length of, I think, 6.5 inches, 6.6 uh, 6 inches, 6.7 inches. So just over 6.5 inches open length with a cutting edge of two and three quarters of an inch. So this is going to be safe for states that have a three inch rule. You will be able to carry this there um, pretty much anywhere. I think in the US, uh, I think the, the minimum is a three inch rule in any of the states. So you can pretty much carry this anywhere across the United States, which is a really awesome thing. Uh, even with that really thin blade stock, it is still super fall shut just because of those ball bearings that they put in there. And if you've had a Civivi knife, you know, what I'm talking about, about their, their ball bearing system being very, very tuned and very, very well made. Uh, the detent is what I would consider dang near perfect. Um, I consider myself to have a large glove size hand and I can fit the whole knife, even though it's a smaller knife in my hands and have a full four finger purchase on it. And I can even choke up because there's this full finger choil here, which is very, very appreciated. It lets you get more control, precise control with your cuts if you ever have to bear down on something. And it's just something that I really appreciate. Uh, again, something with Civivi that they do really well is their pocket clips. I wish they had less of an up bill swoop right here. This does have a tendency to get caught on fabric and things when you put it in the pocket. But other than that, they have great tension. Uh, you're not going to lose the knife and they recessed their pocket clip, clip screws. So all of their knives that I've ever seen have recessed pocket clip screws, which is amazing, especially considering some of the higher end brands haven't even gotten that down yet. Um, this also comes with a lanyard loop or a pin in the back. It doesn't have a lanyard hole, but it does have a lanyard accessible pin. So if lanyards are your thing, uh, no fear, you can definitely use this. It's a fully ambidextrous knife. I believe all liner locks are. Um, that's just my personal opinion though, because it's not that hard to close a liner lock with your left hand being a right-handed person and they're just as easily opened um, the same. So I've always considered liner locks to be somewhat ambidextrous. Uh, I do know that certain brands make left-handed liner locks specifically, but that's never been an issue for me personally. Uh, we're gonna do some size comparisons here. So size comparisons up against, say, the Benchmade bug out here. So as you can see, it's a little bit thinner uh, profile, but with a little bit wider of a blade there. So, so it is it is roughly the same size, just a little bit smaller. And then we're going to go and put it up against the Hodeca, another very common EDC knife. Uh, here it is up against its relative here, the ever so popular Civivi Elementum. So it's about the same size as the Elementum, slightly shorter but not very much. I've actually heard people in YouTube videos say that this is going to make this obsolete. I don't see how it's going to make the Elementum obsolete considering the fact that the ergos on the two knives are so drastically different. I just don't think that they can be put in the same category, uh, but that's just my opinion. And then here it is next to the Hogue Ritter, a larger knife. Uh, you could also replace this with the Benchmade Griptilian if you'd like. It, it's definitely going to be a smaller size knife, not even something I would consider to be a medium knife. Um, and here it is next to finally the AD 20.5, which I do consider to be a medium sized knife. So that's it next to a medium sized knife. Overall, though, I do uh, really enjoy the the profile of this blade and having a smaller cutting edge hasn't seemed to be a problem. And it's been very super slicey um, coming in on weight. We're going to see here, I think this is only about two and a half ounces, I think is what it was running. I'll have to double check here, but I'm pretty sure it was only around two and a half ounces. So let's get this switched over to ounces and 
try that right there. Uh, yeah, 2.74 ounces. So just over two and a half ounces. But if you're going off of the one inch of steel to one ounce ratio, uh, that's perfect considering this has a 2.7 inch blade, 2.7 ounces. That lies in perfectly. Uh, the balance point is a little bit farther back than I'd like. Uh, it's not directly in the position where you would put your finger on a, the saber grind. It's actually more on this point right here. I've noticed uh, a little bit further back on the knife. So the balance on this thing is something that I've seen that isn't exactly perfect. That's the one thing about this knife I would say that isn't exactly perfect. But um, as I said, it has a very thin blade stock thickness. So we're going to check that here right now. And the blade stock thickness is coming in at... Uh, 860 thousandths behind the edge, which is super thin. Um, and then we're going to go behind the edge here. I'm sorry, that was just the blade stock thickness, 860 thousandths. Behind the edge, it's going to be 345 thousandths. Or, uh, sorry about that. Let's adjust that number to 365 thousandths behind the edge. Still super slicey. Like I've said in other videos, anything under 500 thousandths behind the edge is a knife that I would consider to be a slicer. Um, and this definitely lends, uh, along with the geometry of the blade, it has a full flat grind going up, I'd say, 95% of the blade to a swedge right here. You get a little thumb ramp with some slight jimping there that I think they do their jimping perfect over at Civivi. Uh, just all around, this is a great value for your money. So if you're on the, the more budget side of things, you're more uh, spend conscious, especially in today's day and age with inflation going through the roof every day, um, this is definitely something I would recommend anybody looking at, especially for the price point. To be honest, I would consider this probably the best made $30 knife that I've ever handled. And I've handled quite a few uh, cheap gas station knives before, and then quite a few uh, very well-made knives. So it, all in all, it's a great purchase. You get D2 steel, which has great edge retention for being an ingot steel. You get a fast flipper, you get ball bearings, a uh, deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws, perfect blade centering. Um, all in all, just a great, great all-around buy. So that's it for today's review, guys. Uh, we're gonna get back over to the desktop setup so we can go ahead and finish out this video. Alrighty guys, well that's it for today's review. I appreciate you stopping by the channel, checking out this new knife that I picked up. And if you found, like I said, any earlier, any of this information at all informative, or if you just like this kind of content, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button and get turn on the bell notification to get posted when I put out new content. Until next time guys, uh, have a great day, stay safe, and above all, stay creative my friends. We need more of that in this world, especially nowadays. Until next time.